Well guys, welcome back to Water MPSUs. What we are here for today is for a quick overclocking guide slash preset for your i9 9900K and i9 9900KF, which will even work for the top of the line binned i9 9900KS, which does five gigahertz out of the box. Now we'll tell you how to push your CPU as high as 5.2 or even 5.3 gigahertz, but I will also give you a preset that will work for most CPUs and for most cooling systems so that you can just get a nice, 10% improvement in your gaming performance, quick and easy. So let's get started, let's go into the BIOS. We will need to use the BIOS for this tutorial, so let's go in there, hitting F2 and delete to enter. But before that, promise me, if this video will be helpful, you will drop a like, maybe subscribe to the channel for more and to check out a few of the cool builds I do around here. So without further ado, let's get tuning in. Okay guys, so here we are into the BIOS. Now, depending on your motherboard's vendor, the settings will be slightly different. Today we have an MSI board and it is a Z390 MSI Gaming Pro Carbon AC. So if you have an MSI BIOS, you're lucky because the names will be the same, but I will also be explaining you what each setting is so that you can do it on every motherboard with no issue, okay? So let's get started. Now, the first thing we wanna do, of course, is go into the overclocking sector and put everything on to expert right here. Now, another thing which is not strictly part of the overclocking tutorial, but that you might wanna do is you might wanna enable the XMP. This is so that your RAM runs at the full frequency. So you might wanna do this on an overclocked system. It is always nice to do it, but be sure to check the stability of this one separately from the CPU overclock. We wanna go and basically select our CPU ratio. This, this will be the frequency our CPU is gonna be running at. What I recommend you aim for as a start of an overclock is a five gigahertz overclock. Now, if you wanna go lower than that, we are really talking about undervolting and I will have a separate video for that on the channel, but for the scope of this tutorial, I say we start from 50 as a ratio, okay? So if you wanna go higher, you can then go higher and like go 51, 52, etc. But 50, I think is a good middle ground for everybody to reach. Now, CPU ratio mode, dynamic or fixed. Now, fixed is gonna give you a little bit more performance. However, dynamic is gonna consume a bit less power. So this is also a choice you want to make. But if you're choosing it for performance, we go with fixed mode. Ring ratio, this is our cache ratio. It's basically uh, what controls the rest of the motherboard aside from the actual computing power itself. Now, we wanna put this, the ratio minus three. So in this case, it's 50 minus three, 47 right there. If you put 51, put here 48, pretty simple. Now you wanna go all the way down until we find our voltage setting. And now on CPU core voltage mode, we wanna put override mode. Now, if you have a different board, this might be called fixed mode or something different, but basically it is the voltage that you apply with no offset, so the voltage directly. And now here we wanna put 1.35. Now. 1.35 will work for basically every single CPU. However, if this crashes on you, or if it is slightly unstable, you might wanna go higher and go to 1.375. But this is the maximum you should need. On most CPUs, you will be able to get away with 1.325. Now, the lower the voltage, the lower the temperature because overclocking will introduce more temperature in your PC. And actually, this CPU is very hard to cool, which is why uh, I have been running this CPU in my daily system for roughly three years, and I did put a copper IHS to reduce the temperature of the CPU. I deleted it and put a copper IHS. I will actually leave the video link up here in case you wanna check it out. But moving forward with the tutorial, we wanna go on CPU load line calibration, and then we wanna put mode three. Now you see that little graph over there. Now I have to spend a few seconds talking about the load line because this won't be as easy. So depending on which motherboard you have, the graph there will be different. So what you wanna do is basically put the load line that is the closest to the flat line as possible. You don't want to have your V-droop dropping too much, okay? For overclocking, if you find your CPU is stable and you wanna just drop the load off your motherboard a bit, you might also wanna go a bit lower, maybe mode four, even mode five, but you never wanna go lower than the middle one in between. So you can just choose what's in the middle over here, okay? And in this case, it's mode four would be the most balanced option overall, but mode three will get you a bit better stability. So with this done, the tutorial is actually over. You can then play around with it. So guys, if this tutorial was helpful, please drop a like and a sub as you promised me at the beginning and stay tuned 
or check out the channel because they have much more, many more builds, tutorial, fan curve tutorial, GPU undervolting. Be sure to undervolt your GPU and other things. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one, guys. Bye.